Check out our sponsors, Nature's Blend, producers of premium Ethiopian black seed products. If you put hijab 10, you'll get 10% off your purchase. Check out their links underneath in the description box. Or if there is one that is actually objective, which everyone should be fulfilling. I, I don't see how it could be objective. This is it's not utopian. Not always. It can actually, it doesn't have to be utopian. So, look, let me tell you something. I, I always give this example, all right? So I want to put it to you. Say, for example, if me and you go to sleep today, yeah? Yes. And we wake up and we find ourselves, say, on a plane. Huh? Or let's say on a train, yeah? Yeah. And the people are around us, they're talking to each other, yeah? And they're eating food and they're having a good time. What's the first thing you're going to want to know? You went to sleep tonight, instead of waking up in your bed, you wake up on a train. Yeah. So what are you gonna, if people are around you eating, conversating, what do you want to know? What they're eating. What they're eating. I'm hungry. Okay, so they've, they've given you some of the food, yeah. right? So now the train keeps going forward. Yeah. Remember, you went to sleep in your own bed tonight, yeah? Uh -huh. You woke up in the, on the train. Oh. Woke up on a train, how yes. did I get here? Good, all right, so that's the first question you're gonna have, right? Yeah. How did I get here, and where is the train? Why? Wherever it is. Where is it going? Where is this train going? Yes. How come I'm on the train, Yes. going somewhere? So what am I doing on a train? What am I doing on a train? And do you think these are legitimate questions? It's very legit. Why? Why, because yeah. one time, at one time I was in my bed, yeah. now I'm on a train, how did Good. I get there? So you were thrown into the reality of being on a train, after having not been there before, yeah. right? Look, the train in this analogy here is like life. Because we've, we've thrown into the reality of life, uh -huh. okay, after having not been here before, uh -huh. and we're going somewhere, we came from somewhere, and we're doing something here. Do you know what I mean? One second, one second. Yes. So, you're talking, when I was a baby, where was I before? What I'm saying is that we've been thrown into life, yeah? There was a time where you and I did not exist. Uh -huh. And then there was a time where we existed and we were aware of our own reality. Yes. So this is analogous to what I've just explained. Maybe not exactly analogous, but it's to some extent analogous. That's what I'm saying. It's the direct analogy is a little bit poor, no? That's all right, because you've been thrown. Look, one guy called Martin Heidegger, right? He's a German philosopher, yeah? He used this term, which is very interesting. It's called the thrownness of life. He yeah. said that you've been thrown into life. You've been chucked into life, yeah? Because there was a time where you were not here, yeah. all right? You did not exist at one point. Now you exist, and you're in this world, and you can you can put, put, you can conceive of that reality. You can uh, realize your own existence. You see what I mean? I think there's a big gap in the analogy. There might be, but the analogy is not meant to be perfect. It's always going to be a problem. Right? But, that, but, but you see the questions here, right? The questions when you were on the train yeah. were, where did I come from? Yeah. What am I doing here? And where am I going? Existential. Existential questions. What Karl Popper called the ultimate questions. Uh -huh. Yeah. So now the questions are still applicable because now we've come from somewhere. Yes. We, we're doing something and we're going somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So where are we going to go? Like we're, like we're, first of all, the first question is where did we come from? Uh -huh. That's an important one. It is. So here's what I'll say to you. Look, you came from your parents uh -huh. and they came from their parents. Yes and so on and so forth but it couldn't be an infinite regress of predecessors right yeah so there had to be somewhere where it all started in the same way this universe came from somewhere there couldn't be an infinite regress of universes or causes because then the universe wouldn't come into existence right just like there couldn't be an infinite regress of predecessors otherwise you wouldn't come into existence one second one second yes yes an infinite regress to the universe yeah so look if we say that you came from your parents, or yes. yeah, and then they came from their parents, what I'm saying to you is that there couldn't have been an infinite regress of predecessors, is that pe yeah, parents yeah, yeah. and parents and parents. Otherwise, it, you wouldn't have never been existed, right? Uh -huh. Because there, there had to be a place where it started, isn't yes. it? In the same way, there couldn't be an infinite regress of entities before the universe, otherwise the universe wouldn't have started, in the same way. Is it, once again, is it the same analogy? <coughs> Is it the same? Yeah, analogy? yeah, yeah, yeah. Or are we just inferring that's how it happened? That's, in the yeah, it's, it's all an inference. But yeah. the question is this: is that you've got, you, you've got, sorry, sorry, you, you've you've got you've got options of, you've got options in front of you. So you've got option one is that the universe came from nothing. Mm -hmm. Option two is that the universe created itself. 
or option three is that the universe came from somewhere, right? Yeah. Or something. Uh -huh. So we're saying, okay, option one is an impossibility because the universe couldn't have come from nothing. Yes. Option two is also an impossibility. So, sorry, say that again. So the option, one. option one was that the universe came from nothing. Yeah? And we're saying that it's impossible for something to come from nothing. Look. Uh, have you, have you yeah. tested all the possibilities that it could come from? Yeah, because by definition, nothing is the absence of something, right? Yeah. So mathematically even, zero plus zero can never equal one. So from a mathematical perspective, from a logical perspective, from an empirical perspective, we have no evidence to show that something can come from nothing. Mm -hmm. That postulation is an absurd one, it's an impossible one. <coughs> so the first option is that some that we came from the universe came from nothing. The second option is that the universe created itself. Sorry, I yes. have to go back to the nothingness. Yes, okay. At the start of the universe, if there was nothing, yes. Could something uh, plausible come out of nothing? No, that's what I'm saying. It's impossible. How do you know it's impossible? Because from all the, all the testing methods that we have, right, whether it's ontological testing methods, mathematical testing methods, empirical testing methods, in all of those paradigms, in all those spheres, yes. not, zero plus zero always equals zero. There's no situation in which we have been able to perceive or test or validate or prove that something has come from nothing. With our limited, faculties. yeah, but we, we have been able, we have been able to show the opposite of it. Everything that we know about everything shows us that from nothing, nothing comes. So, have we? Do we know everything? No one says that we know everything. So that's a different thing. Could there be plausible recognition that it could be? What I'm saying to you is that we 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 don't know everything that is, but we can know some things which can never be. Do you understand? So we might not be able to know everything that exists in the world, yeah. but we can eliminate things that could potentially exist. For example, if I say, look, a squared circle, uh -huh. that's a contradiction. It can't exist, yes. right? Why do we know that it doesn't exist? Because there, there are two opposite things together, uh -huh. right? Which cannot coexist and, uh, at the same time. Like, if we found out that you could square a circle, would this how, the thing? I, No, it wouldn't, because the thing is this, is that how would you come about trying to find that out? You'd have to reinvent the rules of logic if you wanted to, to delete the law of non-contradiction. I'm being pedantic. Yeah. If we could do that. But we, the thing is, we can't do that. Can't. We, yeah, it will be a circular thing because if you try to disprove logic with logic, I mean, think about this. The, the laws of logic, yeah? Yeah. The laws of logic that we know now, for example, laws of non-contradiction, some of the laws of mathematics, some of the, even some Sorry, of the axioms. Do you want to answer it? No, no problem. Go ahead. Hello, daughter. Yes, yes. Speak to his daughter. Hello. Hello. Yes. It's bubbly up. Okay, but. The bottle, the bottle, yes, yes. Let me call you back in a second. The majority of the problems, they know what Ireland is. So sorry, I have to go. No worries. But can I, can I finish off what I'm saying to you, yeah? Yeah. Alright, just to finish off, I want to wrap it up, okay? How do you know that was your daughter on the other side of the phone? It said her name on the phone. Yeah, and, and are, you, are you convinced that that's your daughter? I am convinced. How sure are you about that? By her voice. And how did you know that that was definitely your daughter? Couldn't it have been someone that sounded like your daughter? Could have. Alright, so how, do you, how are you aware and how are you sure that it is your daughter? Well, recognizing her voice. So you employed a probabilistic type of reasoning. You yes. said based on the variables that I have at hand, uh -huh. My daughter's voice, the fact that my daughter's name appeared on the screen with the number underneath, that I'm pretty convinced. Would you say you're certain that it was, it was your reasonable. daughter? It was reasonable. It was reasonable to believe that was my daughter. It was reasonable. Would you say you're happy to live your life knowing that that was your daughter on the other side of the phone? Yes. All right, you see, your standards of, and this is something I want to say about, not yourself, but generally about atheism and agnosticism and skepticism. Your standards for recognizing truth when it comes to daily interactions and transactions yes. is quite reasonable i would say you're employing a probabilistic standard yeah uh -huh. now i want you to employ such a reasonable standard when it comes to knowing where you came from what you're doing here and where you're going because let me tell you something if you employ a reasonable standard for those three questions yeah. you will come to the conclusion that there had to be something with no beginning that started you you'll come to the conclusion that you came from that thing with no beginning, uncaused cause, the necessary being, existence, etc. Because it's impossible for there to be an infinite regress of causes. 
and it's impossible for there to be an infinite regress of dependent things. You will come to that conclusion. I refute that. I'm yes. still sceptical. Yeah, I'm sceptical that that was your daughter on the other side of the phone. Well, you can because you don't know her. Yeah, well, you I don't know... know well, here's the thing. Here's a, what I'm saying to you is that you need to be as consistent with your standards of truth with the ultimate questions in life which determine what you're doing here as you are in your daily transactions and dealing with, for example, getting a phone call from your daughter. I don't think so. Well, that's fine. You don't have to think so. But what I'm saying is, then that would mean that you're basically employing different standards for different truths. And what can I do that? But, um, well, look, here's what I'm saying. You can do that if you want, no problem. But you're deceiving yourself. That is, in my opinion, this over skepticism when it comes to the ultimate questions, which you don't employ in other spheres, in my view, is indicative of a inner psychological uh, reasoning behind it. Maybe you want to be agnostic. Maybe it's more of a want than something which you have philosophized or reason. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So, what I'm so saying. All I can do <coughs> is my, use my reasonable, logical mind. And if I think that the existential question of the beginning of the universe yes. is not there to be seen, I'm not going to hang my hat. But your daughter um, wasn't there to be seen. But I can hear her. No, but hold on. This is a double standard. But can I hear? Yeah, yeah, you can the, see the, the effects of the universe and, and you can reason. Look, you, that could have been someone other than your daughter, yeah? You, it's quite benign to the fact of the start of the universe. But, but let me tell you, here's, here's the problem, okay? You just said, I could hear her, Yes. okay? Now you're using one of the five senses yes. to determine it. Yes. To determine it. But you couldn't see her. There's other senses that were not applicable in that equation, all right? Uh -huh. But you still came to the conclusion, and there was, there could be reasonable skeptical doubt that I could employ if I was to philosophize as a skeptic and say, look, hold on, that could have been an alien that was speaking to you on the phone. Yes. That could have been your wife pretending to be your, or your husband, either, you know, pretending to be your daughter, uh -huh. yeah? Or it could have been someone else, your other daughter. It could have been, you know, her friend. It could it be. It was reasonable. It wasn't empirical, it was reasonable. I, for me, so to okay. why is that reasonable? Why? It's reason reason to me. Why? Why? Because I've heard my daughter's voice several, many times. Okay, I understand. But what I'm saying to you there is that it can still be doubted. Yes. Of course. Okay. But you still you over you override that doubt. Yes. Because you have enough data uh -huh. to conclude in your mind, probabilistically, that it was your daughter. Yeah, empiricism, no? Yeah, okay, fine. Some, some degree of empiricism, yeah, which can still be doubted because of the reasons I've just told you. Major percentage. Okay, what I'm saying to you is this, yeah? In the same way as you've been able to reason probabilistically that your daughter was on the other side of the phone, yes. I'm saying to you, if we have now inference to the best explanation, you have different options. Either the universe came from nothing, and in fact, this idea, the postulation that something can come from nothing is so absurd that actually, let me tell you from reading a lot of philosophy, no one has said it. And the moment some fool tried to say it, Krauss, he was refuted by his own uh, physicist it's friends. It's so fantastical. Yes, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's absurd. It's, 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 it's not witnessed by anyone. It's not empirical. All of the standards that you wish to have in order to make a reasoned judgment about the truth or falsehood of something, were not present in the postulation that something can come from nothing. I Therefore, what it can you're be rejected. Saying. Yeah, yeah, it can be rejected. It can be rejected, and it and it, sh and it shall be rejected, <laughs> and it shall be rejected. I don't think so. <coughs> okay, look, here's the thing. What's the evidence? I don't know. Okay, see, look, this is a, it's a look. What you have here is some kind of. I'm not a psycho. I'm not a psychiatrist. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not here to. You know, you know, give you a little drink and, and tell you, uh, tell you what your yeah, yeah, sit on a couch and psychoanalyze your behavior. But if I were, if I were, I'd say something. I'd diagnose you with some kind of cognitive dissonance. Okay. I say to you, look, you're. It's a good job you're not there. <laughs> I say, look, look, look. You might have cognitive dissonance because the reason why I think you might have cognitive dissonance because you live your life one way. Yeah. But your beliefs in relation to the ultimate questions are completely contradictory to the way in which you act. Do you understand my yes. point? So your reason, your your faculties and your instruments of reasoning become completely like you become an extreme skeptic when you're dealing with the ultimate questions, and you're not willing to be that same skeptic when you're dealing with daily transactions and interactions. Daily transactions we see all the time. They're quite benign, but fantastic. They're not benign. 
You could, it could be a life or death situation right now. It could be. Yeah, if, if a doctor came to you, my friend, and yeah. said to you, let me ask you a question right now, yeah? yeah. If a doctor came to you, your, your daughter, let's say, God forbid, yeah, but your daughter was in the hospital, she needed some kind of a transfer of blood. Yes. Or let's say she even needed a lung transfer, uh -huh. plant. And the doctor came to you and said, your daughter needs a lung transplant and you're the only guy that, can, that has matched her, you know, whatever, yes. and you need to give that. Would you, gi would you give it? Yes. You would give it? Yeah. But hold on, that doctor, he could be making a mistake, my friend. Yes, he could. So I would say to the doctor, is there any other way? No, he'd say no. It might, so what are you going to do? I will go to someone else. There's to, no time. He's saying oh, you've got no one hour. Yeah, yeah, she's so intensive care. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I would act upon my instinct. Yeah? And, so, and do this thing to and save do, my daughter's life. Okay, you think you're saving your daughter's life? Yeah. How do you know you're, you're saving your daughter's life? Because I reasonably believe the doctor who's had... But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, hold on. It's is life and death. No, but you think it's life and death. This is after life and death. Hold on, hold on. Cause. So look, you see here the point. You're willing to put your own, let's say it takes, it could put your own life on the line, yeah? yeah. You're willing to potentially put your own life on yes. the line. And... Or do anything for my daughter. For, uh, anything for your daughter. Yeah. But this, the methods of skepticism that you are employing in the ultimate tr uh, questions that we were talking about yeah. were completely thrown out when you were dealing with that inquiry. It's emotional. It's emotional. You said it was instinctive. It's instinctively emotional. No, no problem. It's emotional. I'm th and there's no contradiction between a good emotional argument and a good rational one. Human beings are emotional creatures. Fine. But you still believe the doctor. Yes, belief. That, so you believe the doctor? Yes. Because you trust in the doctor's credentials and authority? Yes. Because you have enough, you have enough reason to believe that that doctor was actually trained and can analyze the data? Yes. So you see here, look, I want you to use that same method of reasoning when we're dealing with the ultimate choice. Because you said something very important. You know what you said? Go on. You said it was a matter of life and death. Yes. Let me tell you something, my friend. Honestly, yeah? This, these ultimate choice questions are not a matter of life and death. You know what they are? What are they? They are a matter of life and afterlife. Afterlife. Yes, and you know what? Let me tell you something. That's an even more hefty inquiry. So you have to, let me tell you what. Do you what? have evidence of this afterlife? Do you have any evidence that your doctor was actually being, in this analogy, that he's, yeah, do you have full evidence? I have enough evidence as the doctor had. I have, look, do you? Do, yes, I do. Do you know why? Let me tell you why. why? Let me explain. How? Let me tell you how. Let me explain. You know, why did you trust the doctor when he was telling you to do X, Y, Z? Once again, it's quite benign. It's not benign. This Lots is life and death. people have... Life and death. Life and death situation. No, no, but this is life and death. You trusted him, putting your own life at the life. Why did you trust him? We put people in trust to look after our health. But why did why did you trust him? You trusted why? him. You trusted him it's because a doctor, a person of authority. Yes. And you, in your mind, you reasoned it was it was it was an appropriate action, yes. a responsible action, to trust his judgment. Yes. So in other words, you vested authority in the doctor. Yes. Now what I'm saying is this. Why do I have as much conviction as I do that there's an afterlife? Because I vest authority in. in the authorship of the last and final message to humankind, which I believe is the Quran. Have you seen this entity? What? I've seen a doctor. Yes, okay. Who has certification. But you haven't seen what he has seen. Authority. No, but in this analogy, right? Your doctor who you've seen is telling you that there are certain dysfunctionalities in your, say in your daughter's yes. health that you have not seen, but you've instead only witnessed the testimony of the doctor. Uh -huh. But you have as much conviction in the testimony as you probably would have if he had shown you x-rays. So, I have an interaction with another human being. Yes, but you've vested your, now you've given that human being authority. Yes. If the doctor said, look, listen to me carefully. Listen, what's the name again, sorry? Charles. Charles, he says, listen, Charles, you need to give your lung right now because you're the only one who, I'm not a doctor, I don't know what I'm talking about, but you need to give it. It could have an impact on you, yes, yes? but it's a life and death situation. Huh? And then he says this, he says, come into my office. I'll show you all of the reasons why I came to my conclusion, if yes. you would like, but that could slow the process down and it could also endanger your daughter's life. What would you do? Would you go to the office or not? Or the answer, my phone. I have to go. Is that what you'd say to the doctor? <laughs> no, no, I'm only joking. 
But you, do you see what I'm saying, yeah? I think you do. Think about it deeply. I know. And deep I down. I deep down. Don't. I know you say deep that. Deep down, I don't know deep, what you're on about. No, you just review the video when it comes out. Think about it twice, three times. Have a tea. Think about it the fourth time, and then you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> How many times? Maybe five, actually, right? Take care, guys. See you later, man. <coughs>